I'll supply you with Class A pure horror medication. I'm your doctor now. I'll supply you with Class A pure horror medication. I'm your doctor now. Bleeding welcome. It's your horror medication time. And this horror nori is called Puzzle. Sitting on the white chair, arm resting on the white table. Hilary enjoyed her cold beer and people watching the tourists as they were energised by the evening's cool temperature. She watched the beautifully dressed street flamenco dancer walking into the crowd and placing her wooden board onto a small carpet, ensuring it was level and flat on the cobbled street. With no music, the petite dancer began to clap her hands. What a way to get everyone's attention. Powerful flamenco stance, arms raised with strong claps. As Hilary watched the dance, it was at this moment her life puzzle gelled together. She had a fear of crowds and had no memory or reason to be in this life anyway. However, she suddenly realised in a previous life, her young vulnerable neck was snapped in one of the packed trains that took millions to the German work camps. She had a fear of confrontation. Again, no experience in this life made her cautious. Hilary gently closed her eyes, isolating herself from the loud surroundings. And another black and white film clip in her mind cinema showed Hilary as a very young man, disagreeing with a larger religious looking man and subsequently being whipped and beaten to a horrific, slow and painful death. Previous life endings, the puzzle coming together, one after another, like a small cinema showing short films in her mind. None of this was alcohol or drug induced. This is genuine and very real. Hilary just knew it to be, and she didn't have to prove her realisation to anyone. Hilary had a social fear of not being heard. She was aware she talked loudly than needed. Again, no past experience that damaged any confidence. The cinema in her head began the next film. In yet another nasty previous life's end, she had a miscalculated anaesthetic dose. She wasn't given enough general anaesthetic, so she woke up during major cardiac surgery. She could feel the ice-cold steel of the surgeon's tools and the stranger's hands wrist-deep fumbling inside her, cutting, knotting, removing and bleeding fountains. She was unable to scream or move, and the trauma caused a very slow, harrowing death. There had to be a link to all this. Every previous life for her ended suddenly and was horrific. No wonder in this current life she was so fearful of everything and everyone. And it wasn't because she spent so much time on her own. She had a fear of eating, which caused her to have an unhealthy slim frame. Again, she had another life which passed down a terrible experience that tattooed devastation forever. As a man, she was a prisoner of war. Her captures carried out experiments, which included having her stomach removed, and then they attached her esophagus direct to her intestine. At the white table, Hilary became nauseous, she could hear the cheering and the sound of flamenco shoes stomping on the wood, gathering speed to crescendo. Then, just like a baseball bat swinging fast into a bald skull, she realised in this current life what she had to do. 
she understood now. The patterns from her previous lives were not just about the constant cruel deaths. She knew she was a good person. A good person in every life's journey she had, including the current now and here. This was the lesson. She had always been a character of dignity and full of kindness to others. Now feeling empowered, she had to be bad in this current life. Not bad as in the pickpocket, steal a dress or tell a lie kind of way, but to do an evil act. We're talking bleeding bad. This would enable her soul to experience a life without fear, pain, worry or anxiety. She wanted to act fast. Her beer was finished and the flamenco street dancer was collecting money from the impressed crowd. And just a few yards away, Hilary noticed the feral young girl teasing the two feral cats. This small girl looked wrong. She stood out. No expression in her dark brown, doll-like eyes. A young tanned man asked the girl to stop, yet the girl carried on ignoring the man teasing the cats. Moving from her table, Hilary knew this was her chance. This little girl was her target. The aura of her nasty nature towards the cats would make the kill more acceptable and less traumatic. No parental presence in sight. The young girl climbed up an old cannon which had metal fencing to prevent children from falling into the deep sea far below. On the actual cannon itself the fencing stopped either side but four black sharp spikes continued over the black cannon's barrel. Just as the young girl reached her height destination lying on the barrel enjoying the view, Hilary's two hands grabbed her, one by the base of her tiny spine of the white dress and the other clasping below her smooth neck. Hilary raised the child in the air, slamming it like a rag doll onto the spikes. Two sharp spike points entered easily through the tiny eye sockets if it was quiet, you would have heard the popping of the eyeballs and the jelly-like fluid slopping on the concrete floor. Hilary had tunnel vision and didn't care about the screaming crowd of men, children and mothers forming a wide berth around such a barbaric, random execution that will damage all that witnessed it. The small body was twitching. The shoulder that absorbed a third spike was still, yet the arm and hand was shivering. If it could, it would have pulled away from the dead body it was connected to. Seconds before, the men and angry women of the crowd scratched, punched, kicked and killed her again. Hilary realised the girl was not the right target. The girl was the very demon that watched over her in every previous life. She would have passed the test if she killed the flamenco street dancer. Now her guardian demon was dead. In her next life she would have to start her pain and suffering again, starting with that next snap. I'm bleeding critic. This horror medication was called Puzzle. Be sure to follow me at Bleeding Films and check out my abattoir at bleedingfilms.com.